welcome to Lorenzo Data Solutions. Uh, today, okay, so before I explain to you the new topic, uh, my name is Anipi Abraham, SAP Success Factors Consultant and Corporate Trainer. So today in this uh, short video, I would like to explain to you about uh, the latest updates related to the Employee Central uh, H2 2025 release. So I have already posted a blog on my website uh, last week, and I would like to explain to you about those updates. Hopefully those who are watching this video would help you. Okay, so there are only a few of the important updates I have updated on this uh, particular blog, uh, which are I felt like the most important thing that customers should be aware. The consultant should be aware so that you can help your customers to, uh, you know, use these features for a better experience of the employee central applications. So the first thing is regarding the release uh, details. So the preview release date, as everyone is aware, 13th of October uh, 2025, it is already done. And the production release is between from 14th to 16th November 2025. So, so those who are already working as a consultant, so you can all test all these preview uh, release updates in Employee Central. And whichever you feel as for your customer current business system setup, and if you feel these features are going to support you can uh, test it, you can see the impact and uh, behavioral change, and then accordingly you take the approvals from your team, whoever is, uh, you know, your top management is in charge, and then uh, update those in the production as per the production release dates. And as everyone is aware, we have uh, two different types of updates. One is universal updates, and the another one is a customer based updates. So universal updates that, you know, equally every customer that without any manual intervention, those updates are going to be effective, automatically enabled. Any other extra configuration is not required. Whereas um, the customer configured, so customer can choose if they feel this particular option is going to help them uh, if they go and enable this feature, uh, experience point of view, enhancement point of view, behavioral point of view, then the customer can choose that particular feature, configure it as for their business setup. So first, uh, let us try to understand the first option I wanted to update you all, which is uh, MDF objects related. And uh, now all the you know, the list of base objects, rules that when you create uh, uh, for uh, metadata objects in business rules, earlier they were not in the order. They're not in the alphabetical order. Like, you know, if you go to the manage business configuration, if you look at the HRAS elements, uh, but if you look at in the data model, you don't find them in the alphabetical order, but that's a correct process. But whereas if you look at in a simplified way in a manage business configuration, you will see everything in the alphabetical order. Same way, you know, when you go and create a business rule for any metadata objects, now the objects are going to be displayed in the alphabetical order. And you can see, for example, you're going to create a rule. Uh, and when you just simply go and select uh, the base object, now this was the look and feel of the, the order of the objects earlier. It was looking like this. You know, this was the before update. Now, I'm sorry, I think uh, these are all the in the alphabetical order. Now you can see everything and uh, if you just scroll down, uh, this is before uh, update, the values are not in the alphabetical order and uh, it is showing you randomly some random text uh, kind of thing. OK, so but this one is going to be automatically on and there is no manual intervention is required to enable this feature 
and it is going to be available for all customers from the production release date that is uh, from uh, 14th to the 16th based on the data centers uh, the dates have been specified that's the regarding the first update the second update is uh, there is a decline option which was not supported earlier uh, every time there is a workflow, you know, there is a workflow request to your manager, your HR team. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, your manager would like to decline the request. But actually, earlier, the decline option was not supporting for MDF objects uh, when the workflows are requested. So as an approver, now what happens with this update? You can directly decline your MDF workflow request for any of your MDF objects. But earlier, we always used to say the pending data has to be always set to no, right? But because the system will create an inconsistency within the data, it was not supported, right? So now you can set here pending data is equal to yes. And then uh, every time what happens, right? when you are uh, on your workflow request page uh, but you have to do one more thing you have to always go to your particular corresponding mdf object uh, for example employee time or a position or employee timesheet and etc and then you will find uh, one additional field uh, will be added after the release that is a workflow approval behavior so you have to select the option as a show decline option. So what will happen when you go and enable it, then on your workflow page, when your approver uh, you know, wants to decline it, and you will be able to say a decline option will be visible. This is how this will be looking like once the update has been introduced from the production release, release date of H2 2025. But how it was looking before earlier, there was no decline option, but you only have option send back. You only have the option to send back for any MDF objects. But today you have an option where you can decline your request on your workflow page by your approvals. This is also very, uh, you know, uh, important feature that should be available so that the experience for the workflow approvals will be convenient and uh, easy to handle your workflows right so if there is no decline option for example you don't want to approve it it will go on put it in the system as a pending status so it should be always either cancelled it either you send it or decline it so it's a good way but now this is also a customer configured it's not automatically on so the customers who ever wants to use this option they can go on configure it's very simple go to that particular corresponding object whichever mdf object you want to enable this feature selected for example in the screen you are seeing the object position and then you simply go on select a workflow uh, you know what you call uh, approval behavior and you simply go on enable that show decline option okay so you have to go on enable this one and but that too not in the objective definition but you have to go to the manage data and uh, in the manage data you have to select the object called object configuration don't go to the uh, configure object definition you have to go to the object configuration select the corresponding object and then you have to go and select that show decline option so that's how you need to set up it's a very basic setup nothing so serious to worry about it uh, the process and all but the step by steps with the screenshots i have mentioned in this blog you can go through it so here are the technical details you can go through it when you have a time this is a minor update next one the another update i would like to explain is a, a home page experience so we have a, currently the latest new experience home page but currently, SAP also enhanced another new experience home page introduced from this H2 2025. What are all the features supports? Like you, you can use it like a, with less scrolling and a clear separation of actions and links and all the different options, personalized options, 
uh, ad admin center options directly on the home page, uh, latest home page cards and features, the custom content and everything. So you just go and uh, enable it. So you have to go to the uh, you know, company system logo settings and enable the latest home page experience. That's the one prerequisite that you need to enable it. And there are no any additional RBP permissions are required to enable it. So just one single setting, go to the company system logo setting and enable it. And uh, now how it looks like, this is the latest. You can see you have a good morning uh, with the Tesla worker and you will find all your time sheet, uh, time off, uh, your, you can activate your mobile application, uh, you know, all your payroll tasks. And uh, these are the tasks that, you know, where the system will show all the workflow related dynamic content uh, that when you, your manager approves, this content will disappear automatically. Similar behavior. And in the organizational update, you will have like a custom content where it's configured and additional things is very similar uh, like the previous one, but the look and feel has been upgraded at the top. You will also find uh, the personalized uh, the actions which are separated. The look and feel is like like section uh, actions that what we have today in the new experience home page similar way, but uh, it is more optimized and easy with the less scrolling. OK, so I request you all to go through it and uh, you can see what are the differences that you have the from the previous one and to the latest one and etc. And uh, here is the latest one what we are using it and sorry, what is the existing one is this one and this is the latest one. But again, I don't think this is a automatically on, but this is a customer configured. So customer can choose it if you if they wanted to use the a latest uh, home page experience, they can enable it. It's just a one click access and uh, you can test it in the lower environment. See all the features that are existing in your current system are supporting with the latest uh, home page experience update. Then accordingly take the approvals and go and enable it in the production system accordingly. That is another important update. Next one, a removal of a pending request permission. So in the uh, RBP, we have an employee views section and uh, there is a section called pending request uh, that every time you have to go to the RBP and you have to go and enable it. But most of the time it's actually not in use because everybody needs it, right? So as a result, all the login users will see the pending request workflow page as previously it was not supported by default. It has to be enabled through RBP. So that is going to be removed now completely by SAP. You don't need to go to RBP and enable it. So it is automatically on and no manual intervention is required from customer side. Next. Next, another uh, update that I wanted to explain the dependent can only be linked to one employee. OK, sometimes earlier that whenever you, uh, for example, this is like a validation kind of behavior. Uh, every time you go and import the data, the dependent information, you are able to maintain the multiple dependence information. That, that is, uh, you know, system is allowing you. But now, uh, in order to avoid the inconsistency within the data, so what SAP has done, uh, previously uh, dependence to multiple employees, you know, was allowed, but, you know, there is a, a possibility of inconsistent data. But now, uh, if you want to wish to link uh, the same dependent to multiple employees, uh, what happens? You have to create it separately. But now, uh, one dependent to one employee, one dependent to multiple employees doesn't support any longer. But earlier, one employee to multiple employees, one dependent to multiple employees, it used to support. But now what they have done, they have applied the validations so that previously uh, those, those records were you know, not supporting. So that's why if you are assigning the same user um, as a, a dependent to the multiple employees, system will throw the error 
uh, you know, automatically. So there is no extra additional validation uh, rule configuration is required. You know, system will go and verify it. So you can see uh, if you try to link one more uh, uh, one dependent to multiple employees, so you will receive the validation error. You know, here it is a screenshot. So it is also automatically on and there is no customer configuration is required. Uh, so next one. Redesigned dependent editing UI and S3 UI. So it's about the small button you have it now. So in the latest people profile, uh, you know, uh, SAP redesigned the dependence editing UI, history UI, uh, you know, which will give you a better experience. For example, if you look at the screen, uh, you know, you can see that on the dependent information and you can see these options like edit and history uh, clearly but how it was earlier uh, the earlier it used to be like the icons that you can see edit icon history icon it's like uh, sometimes for beginners it may be a little confusing but now the latest uh, for example sap have enhanced it like uh, instead of that pencil icon uh, globe or history icon instead of that uh, it has been redesigned and uh, like uh, edit and history options are added it's a definitely a good option to enable it because it will help your customers to experience it so these are also going to be a customer configured and it's up to your customer choice that if they want it uh, you can go and customize it accordingly so these are all some of the important details that I wanted to explain uh, with regarding the release of the uh, H2 2025 uh, related to the employee central. So I believe those who have watched this video would be helpful for you to understand a few of the features and accordingly you can decide whichever you feel like is going to be useful for your customers. Go and uh, explore it test it, verify the behavior, and accordingly enable it in the production as for your customer's business process. So thank you so much for everyone for watching this short video. See you all again next time with a new topic. Bye. Thank you.